So, uh, hello YouTube audience, if you're watching from YouTube, hop on the magic school bus. We are here in class, um, real quick, before I do anything too crazy, um, I want to show how to download the Max Packs watercolor pack that we will be using today in the tutorial. If you want to know how to create digital illustrations using watercolor, this is for you. And it is on, I am on Procreate on the iPad Pro 11 with the Apple Pencil. So that is what I use for Procreate. But if you're looking to install the Max Packs watercolor pack, it is here on maxpacks.com. You just go down and you uh, somehow get out of it the ad that he put. You look for watercolor. Here it is. And you just, I think it's, it's not that expensive. I bought it the night it came out. I've been using it ever since. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, it has a heck ton of brushes and two paper textures, which is always fun too. It has eraser brushes and paint brushes and smudge brushes, all separate. They're great. So this is where you go to go get it, in case you're curious. I'll come back over here and this is how you use it. I prepared a sketch for us today. <clears throat> it's a pretty similar process to painting traditionally, so don't worry if, if you're not used to painting digitally. It should be easy to get a hang of if you are used to painting watercolor traditionally. But I've I've basically prepared us a sketch to work with of my cat Lola with her little tongue out. Lola is my most common watercolor subject or just subject in general. She's probably the thing that I paint the most. So I'm extremely comfortable painting her and it should go well. So for starters, I like to put down some kind of base color. That'll probably be kind of the milky brown that she has going on. I'm gonna try to find it. I can always take the image in and, and color drop it, but I like looking for colors on my own. I'm just looking to see. So here, after you install the watercolor pack, it should go right into this. These are all of them that I have in here. There's just, there's three. I don't know where this one came from. It's an extra one. Um, and the brush I'm going to be using first is mm, the Max Watercolor Flow brush for laying out the general shape of the cat. I might go a little bit more color. Yeah. So now I'm going to just quickly lay down a wash. As you would traditionally lay down a wash, I'm going to also lay down a wash. And the, the big trick to using this pack, as you would call it, is to not lift your brush. Um, that is one of the big tips that I would give anyone that's starting out with the Max Packs watercolor brushes is just try not to lift your brush too much if you're wanting to get a solid kind of color. Don't worry if it goes outside the lines, you know, you could erase that later, whatever. Just make sure that if you want a big solid blob like I currently am, don't lift up your pen. I'm not lifting up my pencil, it's just staying on the screen you know lifting up is going to do here I'll show once I lift it I put it back down it does this just like real watercolor so careful with that now I'm probably going to start her face and then finish the chest last I might just really quickly lay out some values using the same color and the same brush and the lighter you pressure you put on it the less kind of pigment it puts down just like a real brush so that that is a you know a technique that transfers over quite well I found that these brushes are 
as similar to actual watercolor as you could get. Just laying down all that color. I also have no idea how long this is going to take us, so if we go over an hour, it's perfectly fine. You know, I don't really care. So, here you have a nice kind of wash with some little values set in, and the real best way for me to explain the process of using these brushes is that you just keep laying on values. Keep laying them on on top of each other like milk and eventually you'll get something quite nice this is kind of the main brush that I use I, I tend to limit myself with brushes a little bit I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing but um, when it comes to these brushes especially I don't really use too many out of the pack I really like sticking with the ones that I enjoy the most, which the flow, the flow, watercolor flow that we're using right now is definitely one of the ones that I like the most out of all the brushes. It is just so soft and, and chonky and, and it feels like you're painting with water, even though it's of course digital. It feels, it feels like you're dropping water onto your paper. but pretty soon we'll switch to some of the other brushes and I'll, I'll demo them as well. But this is the one that I use for, I guess the majority of my painting. And eventually I might choose to get rid of the sketch, by the way, or I might keep it. I, I, sometimes I keep it if I'm doing a painting, sometimes I get rid of it, it depends on what the look I'm wanting. I'll definitely probably change it from being red if I keep it, so maybe like something more brown. But sometimes I absolutely keep the, uh, the, the sketch. Sometimes it just looks good. He does have, um, there's one brush in here that we're not gonna get to today. We might, but if in case we don't, it's the, uh, the fountain pen and the black pen and the brush pen and the pencil. Those are all kind of self-explanatory, you know? They're kind of just pens, pencils, liners, etc. They're really great. I use them. I used to use them for all my lined <laughs> uh, drawings, and then I kind of made my own brush for line art not too long ago that I really like. So I don't really use it anymore, but they're great too, those brushes. I just am slowly going to go darker. Obviously I could just make the jump to going really dark here. I might grab a new brush if I want to, or I might not. But all these brushes have different applications that I use them for. I absolutely recommend exploring each of them because you might find that you like certain brushes for certain things and then not for the other thing. Like if I'm using a brush that you use in a different way, that's like totally normal and like absolutely cool. Great part of these brushes is like the experimentation. And I think that if you use these brushes, you have to kind of learn a few things. And one of them is the same thing that you learn when painting with actual watercolor that to kind of just accept the little flaws that are in it. Watercolor is like a very flawed material. Like nothing is ever going to come out perfectly cell shaded and god tier looking unless you're like Casey Golden or something. Like when you're painting with watercolor it all comes out like watercolor does. So this pack kind of definitely emulates that feeling of like well, my mistakes are my mistakes, and they're not really mistakes, it's just a part of the medium. Can't really worry about that kind of stuff too hard.
But I've been using this pack since it came out. I It came out on... Mm, I think it came out on New Year's Eve. 2020. <laughs> the only good thing to come out of 2020 was this brush pack. <laughs> For real, I love I love this pack, and it has been one of the highlights of my year. I'd have to say, when I really think about it like that, like yeah, man, this has really uh has really given my art a sense of self this year. When it really hasn't had any, like when my I, my digital art felt very like purposeless and like I didn't know what I was doing with it, and then after installing this brush pack, it kind of gave a lot of my digital art the character the the. A lot of my digital art, the character that I was looking for, for it, it gave it a new vibe and textures, and it made it unique to me, and, and, you know, I'm like making anime art with it, and not a lot of people are making anime art with watercolor textures, and I'm, I'm constantly looking for ways to adapt watercolor styles into my digital art, because I am a traditional watercolor painter, so, always looking for the ways to kind of have those two transfer over and be friends and stuff. <laughs> and Lola here is always, always ready to be my subject for any painting. She is always posing and always making faces that are unbelievably hilarious. Any, any time of the day you look at Lola, my cat, she's probably got her tongue out or something. Or her teeth are out, or her gums are out. She's got- she- well, she has teeth, but she only has, on estimate, maybe seven at, at most. <laughs> she got them all removed earlier this year in a, in a very scary procedure under some very scary circumstances that we thought mm, we might have lost her for, but now- She's been doing great. She's just got a got a got most of her teethies missing. She is a a cat that I had received that we had received from a previous owner. And what usually happens with that is these cats that you get that have had homes and lives beforehand, sometimes they have issues and health issues that, that you need to get checked out and figured out quickly because sometimes previous owners don't realize or don't care or whatever yada yada <laughs> complicated story but you know if you're gonna if you're gonna strange cat from a neighbor make sure to get them uh, looked at lots of brushes in here this one I like a lot too the uh, sorry I should probably tell what it is the watercolor flood clean. Another favorite. I'm really starting to get those darks in kind of quickly. Because eventually I'm going to want to get rid of this sketch and start really, uh, really laying down the details. I think Lola here would be excited about that too. Lola was just here like two minutes ago. I don't know where she went. <laughs> she like bailed. Mother is doing what? Painting me? Mother's painting me today? What's for? Again? <laughs> Mother's painting me again? I really want to get the white details that she has from the light coming in on, on her face. I feel like that's something that, um, and a big bonus of working with watercolor digitally is that erasing. <laughs> with watercolor, you usually have to plan out your whites, like traditionally, so far ahead. Like, 
before you start painting, you have to plan out where you want all of your whites to go and make sure that you don't paint there and or put masking fluid down. It's such a pain in the neck, but for digital watercolor, it is totally different because you can always erase later or as you're as you're painting. Super easy to use. Super easy to learn. I'm just gonna really quick hide the sketch so that way I could see where we got. We're making a pretty we're making a pretty decent painting here, I think. <laughs> a pretty decent painting for this class. I find that cats tend to be great subjects always and uh Lola especially her values. I've always loved just painting the values that she has in her face and the rest of her body. Her browns have always... I mean, I love them. I love those browns, man. She's truly blessed with like the most coffee, chocolatey, mocha colors of all time. And she knows that too. She knows she's cute and chocolatey. Oops, I had to itch my nose, so I just messed that up. <laughs> I might grab a different brush for this. Might go back to the uh, flow. The flow, I f the flow brush, I also find to be better with blending. It blends better. It's kind of a self-explanatory brush, you know, it, it, it feels like there's a lot of water to it. And here I'm starting to lift my brush up a little bit more, a little bit more frequently. Lifting my brush up to get, to build up some darks and some texture. painting Lola. My mom always says that. You're always painting Lola. How do you paint me? <laughs> Why don't you paint me like you paint Lola? My mom's not Russian. I, that's just the only accent that I'm able to do for some reason. blacks I'm kind of ignoring what's happening down here per se um, a good tip for painting is that the the place where you want the most focus to be on the painting is where you definitely want to render the painting out the most just what I recommend definitely recommend that if you want your a certain area of your painting to be the focal point make sure that you render that part of your painting out the most because that's where the eye will go first. Your eye goes to the most detailed part of the painting. So, you know, I'm not gonna worry too much about the chest and you shouldn't worry about that kind of stuff either. I'm just gonna quickly clear out the eyes and I might turn off the sketch layer at this point. I might. I'm just looking if there's anything I need to make note of before I get rid of the sketch layer, but I don't think there is. I think we're good. So one thing that you'll see painters do a lot, digital painters, is they use the uh, color drop tool for appropriate. It's the little square button between the uh, between the sliders over here. You see where my finger is? It's right there. Um, just hold it and then press and then grab a color. And you might want to start using that now if you're painting with me. <laughs> or in just in general 
This is right about the time where I start using it. Or not, you know. She's kind of got a really, like now I, it's kind of hard to see with her, and this is why it's fun to paint her, is where the really dark parts of her are. She's kind of got very dark right there. here right where the uh, mouth ends is very dark as well it's a bit hard to see what's happening underneath her whiskers but she does have a little bit of a light spot so I'm still using that flow brush and I'm just barely applying pressure right now as well just barely touching the, the canvas I don't know if I like that all, all the way, you know? I don't know, really know if I like that or not. I might make the brush bigger. I like that more. she is very dark so it's gonna be an effort to get her to that dark shade but also digitally I could always make her darker if I need to I could always lower the brightness digitally there's a lot more that you could do traditionally than you can I mean there's a lot more that you could do digitally than you can traditionally because of stuff like that you can really go in there and fiddle with the settings and edit things to be the way that you like. Especially on Procreate. Procreate um, just updated with all those new layer settings too so there is a lot more to work with when it comes to editing your art in post on procreate you know you can always throw your work on something like photoshop and edit it but i i prefer to stay in in engine <laughs> and there is a lot a lot of options nowadays on procreate to edit your art in the same application Same brush still, same same spiel, nothing's changed. Same flow brush, still just throwing all that color in, getting it all in there. I might take the time to make her darker, just a little bit. I wanted to do that, I don't know if I'll stick with this or not, but underneath the magic wand, you can use all these settings. There is one for brightness. I might just darken her a little bit and bring up the saturation a little bit at the same time. I like that. Alright, I think I might get started with these details. So. I really don't use that many brushes with the Max Pax watercolor brush. The second brush that I use the most are these two. They're kind of the same, but I switch intermittently between them. I don't really know the difference between them. They kind of act the same, but sometimes they act different. These are the uh, detail brushes. 
I put that opacity all the way up. As you can see, they really are solid brushes. The harder you press, the more translucent they are, but uh, they're good for detailing everything. So I'm just gonna come in here with a tiny brush. I don't know if that'll work or not. Will it? It might not. I might have to get another brush for that. But I could start with the darker details first. I might go all the way to black. I don't know. Maybe not. watercolor I would say don't worry too much about the details now I feel like this is too dark maybe I'll go back yeah I wouldn't worry too much about uh, the details one other beauty of digital art and just being able to go back like that pretty crazy just shaping the nose out Obviously this is a, a process, you know, you are painting and, and, it, and take your time and make sure that you get everything set and through the way it needs to be. Make sure that your cat can sense before you paint them. <laughs> Ask them politely if they want to be painted or not first. You see, when I when I adopted Lola, I made her sign a contract that she would be the victim of my paintings. So, always have that on hand. This, uh... Oh, by the way, this app over here that I'm using is called VizRef. Maybe we'll cover it a different day. A different class. It's a handy-dandy app that I use for my reference. Maybe we will talk about it a different day. If that'll help you guys in any way. And just try to follow, trying to follow here the shapes of the faces, the shapes of her face and the way that they kind of move into each other here. I'm kind of seeing a shape sort of here. sort of starts here and then it goes over the nose to the other side and it makes that little circle, little eyebrow that we saw earlier on both sides. I love the scratchy edges to this brush, by the way. See that? See that edge? Ooh! I mean, that is watercolory. I don't know if I like how that's blending in too well. Might maybe I'll use one of the smudge brushes in here that he has underneath the smudge section for the watercolor brushes. If you hit the little finger thingy for Procreate, that's where you can find your smudge tools. Um, and Max Pax has all these different smudge tool brushes that I do in fact use to the best of my ability. I don't know if I'll use one yet or not though, I'm kind of thinking about it. I 
I might try to work something out here. So I'm just using that detail brush to, as as the brush would explain, lay in a lot of the detail markings and colors and stuff that her face needs. Be messy with your strokes, by the way, you know. Don't be needing to make such clean brush strokes. Uh, remember that this is watercolor. It's hard, it's easy to get lost in digital art and forget what your purpose is and for the purpose of these brushes I would say the purpose is that you're using watercolor don't forget that these are watercolor brushes and let them let them be that allow them to be watercolor brushes allow them to be messy like watercolor brushes and and unpredictable and mistake worthy and surprising like watercolor brushes are normally Watercolor is like the messiest paint medium ever. Here I am going to use the smudge brush a little bit. Right in here. See that? I might use a different one. I might use the uh, this one here. It's always just about testing out these. I'm not very that familiar with the smudge brushes. I'm not really a smudge person. But I like this one. For, for how I do this, by the way, when I'm smudging, all those are individual strokes. I am really quickly just lying my brush down and just smudging. That's a technique that I, that I use with the smudge brushes, in this pack at least. These are kind of the only smudge brushes that I use in general, so... Let's keep laying out those details. Lola's kind of got this bit of a spot on her mouth. I don't really know why, but she's a cat. She's not perfect, you know? That would fail her in, in the uh, show. <laughs> She'd fail. The, the judges would be like, Ugh! What is that? You're no pure breed. I don't actually know if Lola is a pure breed or not. All I know is that she's got a cute little spot on her on her cheek, kind of. It's so cute to me. And it's those edges between the pools of watercolor that make this brush really nice and make it look like real watercolor. Allow them to happen, because it, it'll make your art look more traditional. My professor one time told me, he said, Watercolor is about making a piece that looks like you didn't try hard at all to make it, but it's still good, and you did, you did try really hard to make it. But watercolor will always look like that you, like, took no time at all into it. So... To keep that in mind when you're painting in watercolor. That your painting will likely come out like you did nothing. <laughs> you want it to make it look like that you painted it fast. Oops. I don't know why that happened.
And then when someone asks you, you just tell them that you painted it in like 2 point seconds. 2.2.0 point, 2. seconds or something. Yeah, I painted it at the speed of light. Can you tell? It is watercolor, you know. Right now she looks like a ghost because I haven't done her eyes. When I do Lola's eyes, um, she has very dark eyes. Usually when I paint her, I do not paint her eyes the way that they actually look. I take an artistic liberty with her eyes. Every time I paint her, I give her big blue eyes rather than the dilated pupils that she typically has. <laughs> I'll come down here, I'll throw some of that color down here to reshape her arms. Her chin here, I want to come in here with the detail brush. Kind of get her chin shaped out. Her chin is still relatively darker than her chest keeping the values in mind of her face. Just trying to get this part of her mouth kind of up to par with the eyebrow area. It ends up being kind of a slow and methodical process with these brushes, especially when you're doing a painting that looks like a painting, you know, a realistic painting. I'm gonna do the dark of her ears, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna fix the, well, I'm gonna fix the ear areas first, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna try to put light back into the dark. It's just something that you cannot do with a traditional watercolor. Let's put light back in. Well, congratulations, we're working in digital, so <laughs> that is obviously possible here. Very possible. She's got these little black ears, though. They're so cute. She's such a cute cat. She's got the- I swear to god, she's got the cutest little colors, mate. Find a cat that you really love to paint. That's <laughs> what I gotta say. Even if it's a stray cat that- can't, You can't own a cat. Go outside and look for a cat. And make them your painting subject. And give them snacks so that they keep coming back to the area. That way you can keep painting them. Like, hey, I'll, I'll bring you a little snacky every time you step, you come by, you know. A little incentive. I'm 
gonna come in here. I'm gonna really um, contour out her chest fur here. As you can see, she kind of has a bit of cleavage. I always say that she has boobies. She's a cat with boobies. It's just the reality that she lives. I make fun of it all the time. Your cleavage. Lily, you got cleavage, girl. she is. Those are just a test. I'll put them in like that later. Now I'm kind of trying to throw in the hairs. I'm unsure if I'm ready for that at this point or not. I might... Uh, put in the lights first in the face Now I'm gonna come in and I might do this in a new layer. I might not. I think I will I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna try to Put the light color back into the face where she kind of lost it And I'll merge this with back with the lower layer. I do really like this cream color that I picked. It's really nice. Still with the detail brush, by the way. I haven't changed it. It's the same brush that I that I've been using and that I use for pretty much all the detailing. Just the perfect size and perfect everything. Speaking of size, uh, canvas size is. I have no idea. Let's see. 3000 by 3000 pixels. In case you were curious. In case you wanted to know. Her ears have kind of got a pink, so I might uh, come back in a moment and throw that in there. Messing with some layers here just to see if anything else looks better. Sometimes things look better with a different layer mode. I think I like this green blending mode and then I'm gonna merge down again have it all together I'm gonna fix this part of the mouth just a little bit <laughs> yeah it doesn't really work that's one of the things about this you can't really put the white back in you can another layer but not with the detail brush at least with the flow brush you you can but the detail brush isn't really capable of that kind of thing I'm gonna try to lighten up some of the parts that are really dark right now. Once again, trying to find the shapes in the face that she has happening here.
Like, she kind of is very bright over here. And that is due to the white light that is hitting her. It almost makes it blue, you know? Maybe I will use the blue. Might use a blue to darken her up. Throw that in her nose. Her nose is especially dark. What was once a complete sepia or sepia, or whatever the hell you pronounce it, painting is now I got a little bit of color. These portions are really dark. Like in here. Super dark. I think that it needs to be, everything needs to be lined up around this area. In fact, I wonder if with the new, yeah, the new brush, I could lighten. I could use the lightening tool. Brightness. Take that and brighten, brighten her up in some areas. Ah, yeah, look at that. Isn't that crazy? It's a crazy little thing. And you could use the, uh, the brushes with it. Crazy little tool that Procreate be given us. I'm going to use it. I'm gonna try to find the shapes that are illuminated on her face. Isn't that cool? Thank you, Procreate. Such a cool tool. Now I'm really putting the brights back in. This procreates lovely brightness layer thing. Once again, underneath the magic wand tool.
Just messing with these settings. Settings. <laughs> settings. English. Try and find the best way to show off some of those lighter areas. I think that's the best way. Isn't that nice? A little brightness tool really does a lot. Um, now I think I'm going to start laying in fur detailing. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take the... I might take the flow detail brush. The reason for that is because the white can show up on the... Uh, I'll, I'll show you guys. The white here can show up with this brush but cannot show up with uh, the detail brush, the normal one. I don't know why that is, just the way it is. So the flow detail brush is what I will be using here for those white kind of furs. And I might, I might not use just pure white yet. You know, I might start out with like a, like a not, like a brown or something. I should do, those are white details. So maybe I will. I don't know. To me, there isn't like a good way to portray this. So it might be a little bit of a struggle here trying to figure it out. And that's kind of the point of painting, is problem solving. I'm going to try and problem solve this situation. I think the amount of white on, on her face is quite surprising. So I might try to minimize it. I'm now drawing zoomed out, which helps me get the uh, the full picture really. Yeah, I think the cross hatching is gonna be the way. So I'm taking this uh, watercolor flow detail brush and I'm cross hatching now to get those whites in that she needs. I might eventually get rid of, I don't know. Maybe I should do it on a different layer, just in case. I hate it. <laughs> good strat, right?
Alright. <clears throat> Just doing those little cross hatchings. Racing where I don't want them and where I do want them. I put them down. liking this cross hatching. It's definitely giving it a traditional feel that I really like. So I think that looks good. The whites on her fur now. And I'm just kind of messing around the layer modes to see what looks best. I might just keep it up all the way or I might I might lower it. I'm gonna lower just a tad. Does not look cute. All right, now for fur, I'm gonna go back under, and I'm going to go back to using the watercolor detail brush, maybe the opaque one. And I'm going to come in, and I'm going to start laying in. Um, our details. You want to start from the outside and work in because the fur overlays going from the nose out. So you want to make sure that you're working on the outside in that way that the outside furs overlap the inside furs. Just little, not a lot of like a serious detail. Also, I think that her ears are quite pink, so I'm gonna wanna put that in now before it's too late. It's almost the exact pink that I needed that I just grabbed pretty easily there.
I might take this pink and I might just really quick drop it around the mouth. Now I can go back to doing what I was doing, which was taking it and lying in those fur details. Oops. And I'm using the color picking tool and such to kind of figure out how I want to make these strokes. I like that, you know? Fiddling around to see what fits the scenario that I'm in. There's something quite satisfying about doing a realistic drawing digitally. I, you know, I don't really draw realistically too often. This is certain one of those one of those cases where I am, for the sake of a, a tutorial. It's not super realistic, but it is got a certain level of realism to it. It is definitely painterly, so it's not all the way realism. But it almost is. Just fixing the mouth a little bit while I'm in here, too. Haven't done the tongue yet. Just the tiniest little details. I am pressing a decent amount, by the way, pressure-wise. Little tiny fur details, because our fur kind of, you know, does that does that thing that it does.
we're, we're about to have a pretty decent uh, cat painting here. About to. Doing the uh, the ears. I tend not to like so many little stripes like that when doing realism. I tend to like bigger, bigger strokes to symbolize what's going on in there. I think that looks a lot, a lot better than the individual little ones. Alright, I'm gonna start doing... Probably gonna start doing the finishing touches here. Finishing little touches. Especially to the tongue. That needs to get done. She has a very pink tongue. So I'm gonna use a very pink pink. <laughs> in there. Almost like a little piece of gum. This is with uh, still the watercolor detail opaque brush that I'm using. Shade your tongues. Yeah, you know, I want to put just as much detail here as you did the rest of the face. Even though it's just a little cat tongue. Still want to give it that, that shading. That little stripe down the middle of the tongue really isn't actually there, but uh... And for some reason people see that and then recognize the shape easier as a tongue, so I'm, I'm putting it there just for uh, the sake of easy, identifiable symbol. Now I'm going to come in here I'm going to, I guess, lay in the eyes. Probably going to use the layer underneath it. And I'm going to take a blue. As I said about her eyes before, I usually deviate from what they actually look like. In reality, Lola has massive pupils, but I like drawing her eyes as these big blue glossy orbs. pupils are very dark but I tend to make them pretty light and pretty blue just for the sake of having it that way you could say I characterize her or whatever and make her into a caricature of herself there's certain ways that I paint her and draw her this is certainly one of those one of those special ways that I paint her. Look at that cat. I'm now going to take a black pen. I actually am going to use the black here, since she is so black. I'm going to use the toothy black liner. Make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to come in here around the eye area.
come in here at the nose too with it. Just to really get that black in. The super duper dark parts. That kind of ties a lot of things together. Isn't that nice? Alright, so gonna do the same with white. I'm gonna turn off the uh, stabilizer. If you don't know how to turn on the stabilizer, tap your brush, go to stroke path, streamline is your stabilizer. It's hidden in Procreate. It's a hidden Procreate setting. of the eyes is one way to make something look like it has life. Same with the little nose and the tongue. I would say don't overdo it on those kinds of little white dots since they could be a very powerful tool when you use them properly. I think we're kind of done, honestly, with this painting. You can mess with curves. Nah, I might do that. You know, I might mess with some curves. I'm gonna merge all these together if I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take a uh, magic wand. Maybe I'll go into the color balance or something, or I might not at all. Make her a little bit warmer, maybe? I like that. Give it more color than it actually has. Love that. Before, after, before, after. Look at that. Fuck. That looks great. That looks like it. That's a big step. <laughs> a big step to color. Maybe. Mess with mess with your settings, guys. Give him a little mess. Oops. No, definitely don't want a glitch effect. <laughs> I'm gonna say that this is it for Lola. I think this is a pretty adequate painting of the cat herself. A pretty decent painting of Lola, if I say so myself. Um, so now you guys know a little bit more about the Max Pax watercolor pack. Uh, this was a pretty simple tutorial on how, to, on how to use them in a realistic setting, which is what they are best at. They are also great in like story art kind of looking things like storybooks and comics and such 
looks great like that too I'm probably gonna try using it more with that kind of stuff soon but uh, they really excel in a lot of different places and I always recommend exploring it more but thank you YouTube viewers because this is on Twitch if you are watching this on YouTube um, I stream on Twitch I stream this stuff on Twitch and then repost it later so come over and watch if you'd like to it'll be in the description thank you for watching I hope that you learned something about digital watercolor painting and how simple it is and how fun it is to use and uh, I hope that you can use this in your own work too thank you for coming <laughs>